Welcome back everyone. Today we are going for a ride on my Trek Merlin 6 and we're going to be talking about something a little bit interesting which is the all new Trek Merlin 7 Generation 3. So the current model most people are riding on and are still available to order is the Trek Merlin 7 Generation 2. Trek has introduced the generation system due to the current supply chain constraints where we're going to be having a bit more of an overlap of models due to shipping delays and part delays with bikes which are already in production. Normally towards the end of the season, now-ish, you'd be running out of these bikes and they would be done for the season. Whereas now, with all these issues I spoke about, you have them still shipping and still coming to you in the next coming months and a few all the way into next year. This has created a challenge for many suppliers and Trek has taken it upon themselves to switch to a generational naming game. Now some companies such as Santa Cruz Bikes have already been doing this for many years. They don't necessarily do a new model every single year. They do them as they come and they come out with a model number at the end of it. So just as the Hightower is now on its newest version 3, they will just continue like that with no regard to when it actually releases. This makes a little more sense than just pumping out a new bike every year. Or in Trek's case, which they've done in previous years already, if there's no changes, then they won't change anything. They'll just change the model year from 2020 to 2021. Or in this case, right now the Generation 2s are 2022s and 2023 model years, which look all the same and have all the same features as the past previous models and I will put a little link to the current models out there. This one though doesn't seem to be released anywhere in North America yet. I have found it on probike.co.th which I believe is in Thailand but don't quote me on that and as you may know many bikes are built right there in Thailand so it's not surprising that their site may have something. Now on to the good stuff. This is the newest generation of the Trek Marlin, which hasn't changed that drastically in a number of years. Interesting that I can only seemingly find the Marlin 7 Gen 3. I don't see any other Marlins, Marlin 5 or 6 Gen 3, nothing yet. Right now, they only have the Marlin 7 Gen 3. Let's go over the basics, which haven't changed too much. It is still rocking that rock shocks from fork and it is still going to handle pretty well for what it is. Still has 29 inch wheels with that fork and it's made for a mix of trail and obviously road use as I'm showing here. Nothing too different. Again, it has a 10 speed Shimano Dior shifting, which is the same as on the Marlin 6 I'm on right now which works really well, shifts fantastically, and it has a huge amount of range. Definitely in the high speed stuff, you could maybe go with one more, but for the most part, I'm very pleased with the range this has. Overall, it doesn't look like they've changed the geometry, frame shape, or anything. They've added two new colors, but they did change one thing. They've rolled into a new axle type one they're calling through skew so instead of having open dropouts the through skewer is now essentially the exact same dimensions as a regular old quick release skewer the one they're already using but it is now designed like a through axle so instead of having the open parts at the bottom where the wheel would just drop out you will have to remove the whole nut and bolt, pull it out like a through shaft itself, and then the wheel will come off. Now, it's supposed to roll faster and stronger, and it allows for a more precisely aligned rear wheel, so then it's going to be a little more secure than the QR with the dropouts. I haven't had too many issues with it. But it is intriguing. It should theoretically make it way stronger. You're going to have a lot more overall pressure on the skewer all the way around it. 
So no matter what you're doing, it's really going to lock it in there. As well, it should flex a little less. Is this worth all the changes? I'm not too sure. They haven't added anything else. It is on the front wheel and the back wheel, this through skew. And it does have, what they say, a switch through skew axle. So I'm not sure if there's a tool which gets removed similar to what the high-end Trek Roscoe's and Trek Fuel EXs have. But it is interesting. I did notice in the specs as well, they're specking it with an XT3 2.4 inch wide tire. So this is a new XR model, which is no longer the R, it is the trail model. So it is a little beefier. It's kind of like the homegrown kind of Maxxis models. Little beefier, but still fast rolling. Kind of like the Ardent race in a way as well 2.4 so that is opening up the spacing a teeny bit more than the previous models which were 2.35 max i couldn't see anywhere where it said a max tire size so a little bit hard to tell it does weigh a little bit more being 32.19 pounds that's not going to change too much i assume most of that comes just straight from the tires Maybe there's a small amount of additional weight with that through skew material. Not much there. I, I bet most of that weight is just going to be in the tires, honestly. Remember, the regular weight of them are coming down to about 30 pounds for the Trek Merlin 7 right now. One thing I was shocked about is it doesn't seem to mention anything about a dropper post. I have to assume, and I can't see any pictures here, but I have to assume they're going to install one. Maybe not install one as in it comes with one, but it does say that internal routing is available and references dropper posts in it. So I think that means it is going to be with a hole on it. I can't see it, but the notes do say that internal routing makes it easy to add a dropper post and so you can lower your saddle on the fly obviously that's what dropper posts do this will make it look a lot cleaner instead of having the external cable going out this just makes it way nicer looking but doesn't really offer any any other benefit apart from looks honestly Oop, watch out for the girl walking her cat well cats are gonna get exercise too so overall, not a huge amount of change. Through skew, it's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if it comes on all the next Marley models. I assume it will. I like that they're keeping the original skewer, so it's not like they're introducing something new, crazy, and fancy that everyone's going to have to upgrade or change or buy additional parts to. These parts are going to be available very easily and very much anywhere. You're not going to have to worry about a very specific part. It did mention the switch axle, so that means it may need a tool release instead of just a quick release. Not that big of a deal. I don't see it as an upside or a downside. Putting a lever on things is handy. Not having a lever is whatever. Kind of inconvenient when you don't have a tool, but as long as it comes with something to take it off, you should be okay. Trail-wise, it will make it better with that axle, though it will make it a little bit more rigid. Not that I find this thing handling too bad at all. And, you know, it is a Trek Merlin. You can still only do so limited with it. Adding that internal drop post will look cleaner. And then pairing it with that bit beefier of a tire is kind of like the Merlin 8 setup. So it is interesting. They've stole a little bit of thunder from the Merlin 8. And it looks like the Merlin 7 Gen 3 will be releasing first. But, yeah. It's going to be a good bike. It's going to be worth it. Not major changes. Two new colors, galactic gray and one we've all seen before, which is a teal to nautical navy fade. This one has been on a few bikes, including like the slashes and very similar on the Farleys. Overall looks great. And I like the way the galactic gray looks too. Should kind of blend in well, but not be too bold doesn't look like it's a super shiny one it does look pretty 
pretty low key in a way. And then you do have that bright one with the two-tone color. Well, hopefully this was helpful. Obviously, nobody can order this yet, I don't think. I don't see it anywhere. I have no idea when it will release or if it will release in North America. But it seemed too good to just let slip away. It's still a popular bike around here. And I think these changes will just make it that much more of a mountain bike and that much better of a bike overall and all you need to add is a dropper post if you want to make it trail worthy now whether you need it or not i get why they wouldn't put it on not everyone needs a dropper post and the pricing i have no idea i translated it directly currency converter but it's like 300 dollars cheaper than the other one so you've got to add in shipping or whatever translation these dollars are in i have no idea do not translate straight to canadian or american and anything that makes sense i have to assume a price increase obviously it would be mind-blowing if they brought it down in price but you never know all right guys good luck thanks for watching and keep an eye out for more videos coming subscribe and check out the roscoe 9 video it's hidden off right now bye